and i'm so happy all our old friends sir here professor mukunda was with us when we started the school of mathematical sciences you know swami vivekananda envisioned this university uh, on the eve of his passing away all of you know vivekananda passed away on the 4th of july 1902 uh, when he was just 39 plus and he said i shall not see 40 and he also said as long as the big tree is there the smaller plants will not grow under its shade i should now leave to make room and uh, it is recorded just a couple of days before he passed away he was a bilur mat extremely ill at, at the same time he was reading the encyclopedia britannica which were published 25 shining volumes in those days bilur mat was not very rich even now it is not compared to <laughs> many other institutions but swami ji had so much of hunger for knowledge this is one thing which i want to convey to you <clears throat> develop a hunger for knowledge it is not said what knowledge is going to give you later now we nowadays we never even thought about this every child what are the prospects of this course if you have knowledge prospects will hunt you if you excel in anything we are not getting good barbers we are not getting carpenters we are not getting good plumbers we are not getting good drivers what to speak of other things so if you are excellent in anything jobs will hunt you and don't say what is going to happen to you after i acquire this knowledge you never know after 5 years which is going to be what anyway so the hunger for knowledge is something which will drive you particularly as a physicist and theoretical physicist theoretical physics absolutely which is most useless quote and quote as far as uh, jobs are concerned as far as uh, vocation is concerned but what a theoretical physicist discovers now maybe a couple of decades later maybe even a century later gravitational waves came to be discovered and proven now after 100 years what einstein said you know the f- famous incident in einstein's life when lc told him that if, um, eddington's uh, experiment saying that your theory has been vindicated it is true i said even without lifting his eyebrow he said i knew it was all the time true <laughs> then she said what would you think that if it was been proven wrong i would be sad for god but i knew that it was right <laughs> this is a very famous statement which you know why i am saying this because the theoreticians because mathematically based are absolutely sure of the laws of the universe because it exactly predict what's going to happen the mathematics is a tool for that biological sciences life sciences are very different the famous uh, statement by julian huxley the biologist he said you can exactly predict the orbit of earth or the moon but you can't predict the orbit of a common house fly or a mosquito <laughs> a mosquito is no uh, mosquitoes are very famous you must have experienced some of them in <laughs> our campus Uh, Belurmat is very famous for mosquitoes, and they'll be very happy to get new blood in all of you. <laughs> they are tired of us now. So the mosquito is sitting there. You carefully try to kill it. It goes there and then sees now what? <laughs> so this uh, life introduces something which is absolutely unpredictable. And the first time this was introduced in quantum mechanics, as you know, unpredictability, which simply startled the whole world view of physics, because of which so many new things happened. so i have a philosophy professor mukunda fortunately is with you so have a philosophical world view in physics don't read physics only for the sake of uh, uh, even knowledge have develop an individual philosophical what they call the welton schwang the world view which will guide your life many people asked me after doing so much of physics i was also a student of physics once upon a time professor mukunda was my thesis uh, vivo was examiner and he passed me of course <laughs> <laughs> now uh, many people asked me why did you become a monk after doing so much of physics i said it is not in spite of it but because of it if you read the subject very carefully and take it very seriously integrate with your life you will see that you can't look at the world anymore with the same eyes when you looked at it before you studied physics the world just is not what it appears to be what it seems to be and if you take this philosophically to be true and convinced about it your whole life will change i'm not saying that all of you should change 
to become a, a spiritual what i'm saying is have a philosophical world view about everything why you are doing what you are doing so that your life will be guided by some kind of higher vision rather than passing exams getting degrees publishing papers attending conferences getting awards these are only by the way the, all this will come and much more will come but have a philosophical world view be a good sensible noble unselfish truthful human being because we have plenty of technocrats physicists and scientists why is it that our country is such a poor shape because we are perhaps not cultivating our humanism as much as we are cultivating the other things you know the statement which jamshri ji tata made to swami vivekananda many of you will know it was the vivekananda's inspiration which started this institute of uh, sciences in iisc in bangalore jamshri ji and vivekananda were traveling the same ship at 1893 for the chicago Ex exposition when swami vivekananda told jamshri ji you should now start an institute in uh, uh, in india for uh, developing the science temper and the scientific knowledge in india jamshri ji writes a letter which is there in original at belur mat now in the archives where he says you may remember as a court me as a co traveler in the same ship when you told me that we should now start an institute i have decided to invest money to start an institute where men will live with ordinary decency i quote the words and cultivate sciences both natural and humanistic this is the language which is used there and i can't think of a greater general for this cause than swami vivekananda himself would you care to take up the directorship of the institute vivekananda couldn't for two reasons according to me one that his focus was entirely different two he said i i'm preparing for death he passed away with a couple of years later so just before he passed away nivedita had come to meet him a school for girls had been started in below in uh, calcutta girls would not come to education we have come so far away nivedita had to go from home to home to pull the girls out of education for education and telling the parents after all getting educated is not bad the idea was girls will become hopelessly spoiled through education the nivedita used to convince him but she was finding it very hard to do that because being a westerner and being a slave country at that time so she came to her guru to ask for some instructions about how to go about the whole thing it is recorded swami ji listened for a long time quietly without talking a word which is unusual of him and he said you see you may perhaps start certain subjects which are attractive or perhaps not you think about it my mind is no longer on such things i'm preparing for death he passed away a couple of days later but you should now eat with me today your meals after nivedita had eaten swami ji poured water in her hand to wash she protested very much the disciple and said swami ji i can't bear you do this to me you are my guru swami ji smiled and said but jesus the christ washed the feet of his disciples nivedita just had it in the tip of her tongue to say that was the last time they ever met and nivedita never met swami ji again on that day he said the spiritual impact which has come to belur math will last 1500 years and this will be a great university do not think i imagine it i see it and the last day he is supposed to have told his dear brother brother disciple swami premananda which is written there in bengali keeping the ancient indian spiritual wisdom intact and rooted in it and blending it harmoniously with modern science and scientific development we should have a university so when we plant this university we had a school of indian heritage which you can see on this one side and the school of mathematical sciences on the other side even physically we wanted them to be mirror images of each other so that there be harmonious blending even at the physical level is possible scholars will interact with each other and we created two rooms one is this room in which you are uh, studying which is called the seminar hall which has the latest technological uh, necessities for a seminar on the other side we have a dhyan ghar a meditation chamber in which you have put om purely in the eastern style so that there could be a combination of both those of you want to meditate for some time don't sleep because <laughs> in air conditioned room it's very easy to sleep off so i always say the the most important quality of a speaker is to keep the audience awake Uh, so that's how the the university started and we have come a long way 
And when we started the mathematical sciences, we thought of physics, mainly in the theoretical aspect, then computer science and mathematics beyond in the pure, pure aspect. And we have also the School of Indian Heritage in which we teach classical Sanskrit taught in the Sanskrit medium. So many of the universities in India don't teach Sanskrit in Sanskrit, which is very strange. Uh, they teach Sanskrit in the uh, vernaculars in the uh, uh, Oriya in Orissa and the Hindi in the Hindi belt and so on. Uh, so we thought after a couple of years or even a, a couple of decades, we would not have Sanskrit scholars who will be able to speak and write in Sanskrit. It will be a sad day for India if you have to learn Sanskrit from either Russia or Germany. <laughs> So we wanted to create some scholars and very happy to announce our boys who come with absolutely no background in Sanskrit. After a few years they can fluently speak and write in Sanskrit because it's after all our own language. It's the mother of all the languages in India. That's how the journey began. And this, I mean, this uh, uh, thanks to uh, the academy and uh, Professor Verma and others, uh, Ram Ramaswamy is also very particular that we should uh, host a seminar. We are also hesitant whether we'll have the capacity to do that. I particularly uh, thank uh, Dr. Swami Gupta, who has been so meticulous in every little detail and the my kind of micro planning which he did to the point of irritating all of us at every point. He was so amazingly meticulous because usually uh, theoretical physicists are, uh, fly in the air. Of course, he is a condensed matter man, not a cosmologist. <laughs> so he has been planning it so well. I hope all of you are enjoying not your know, physics, you're enjoying your food and stay. <laughs> and we'll give a feedback form. So frankly, you tell us so that we can improve next time on when if the academy uh, pleases to give us more grants for the uh, future uh, workshops. So we are also extremely delighted. Our resource persons have only words of praise for all of your participants. Usually participants uh, don't attend every class. They don't feel necessary. Not only you are attending every class, you are taking notes and constantly questioning and interacting. They are all extremely delighted. So, uh, uh, Parasparam Bhavayanta, they say in uh, Sanskrit in, in the Bhagavad Gita. So, you praise us and we praise you. And uh, we are happy that you had a nice day. And then uh, about a week more we have. And you will continue to enjoy. And the weather is also very good. So, uh, with these words, I thank everybody for coming and the resource persons who have come and then who will come. Professor Verma, Verma will be there throughout. Professor Mukunda will be leaving a couple of days later. Of course, he comes again. Both of them, I'm very proud to say, they have been uh, chosen as our adjunct professors for this university and they are committed to coming at least twice a year and then come stay, spending time, some time. They are very present and even uh, 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 in the class and outside the class, interaction itself is extremely useful and uh, uh, you should also know our idea is to um, uh, train the younger generation like you, the Gen Next, as they say. Now, Gen Next is coming up, as you can see. <laughs> so, uh, we, you should also pick up some kind of catch the spirit of these people, apart from the physics of it. Spirit of these people, how they are committed to knowledge at this age, how they come, how meticulously they prepare each and every lecture. Professor Mukunda told us, I need a table lamp in my room because I have to. I said, sir, at this age, why are you preparing so much? <laughs> so that is the, I have heard Linus Pauling, who had Nobel, two Nobel Prizes, used to prepare very hard for the undergraduate classes. He was one of some of his students told me. So that is the real, the, that is the commitment and that is the, so, uh, the passion with which they take this uh, uh, assignment. And we're grateful to everybody with these few words because uh, 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 I have been teaching for a long time. Teachers t talk a little too much. When uh, teachers turn monks, it is much worse. So I'll stop with this, thanking everybody. We'll have a group photograph and tea, and then they'll continue. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>